Hello everyone, this is David from GB Canada and this is an introduction to Matrix Gold. So I have the Matrix Gold program opened up here and we're going to go through the interface. So at the top here we have what's called the ribbon bar and this is where you're going to find all the tools in Matrix Gold. The tools are organized into different categories. So if I look here, there's different tabs. So there are curves, surface, solids, tools, gems, and etc. And if you click on these tabs, it's just going to change um, into the different tool sets. So if I click the curve, these are all the curve tools. If I click, let's say, cutters, these are all the cutter tools. Um, it just makes it a bit easier to navigate through all the tools in Matrix Gold. To the left here, we have different menus. So first one up here is the quick commands. These are the commonly used commands. Um, and these don't change, these are static. So unlike if I go to ribbon bar and I click the different tabs, um, these, are, uh, these will change depending on the section you're in. Quick commands, these are just gonna be um, commonly used commands that um, you kind of don't need to go to the ribbon bar to look for, but these will be in the ribbon bar. So if you do want to add any tools to the quick commands, you can simply go to the ribbon bar. Let's say I use the sphere tool. I can click, left click and drag, and then bring it into my quick commands. Oh, sorry. So it's already here. So let's just, okay, so let's say box. I can bring the box in. Okay. So that's how you kind of add it. If you want to remove it, just drag it out and that will remove the quick commands. Uh, below that is the projects. This is how you're going to save most of your files. So to start, you're going to click on this, which is to create a project. Uh, the way I would recommend using the project is um, creating a project for every design you work on. So let's say if you're working with a client, you can have the client name and um, maybe a job bag number. And then that will, whatever, when you're working on that particular job, you can save as you, like step by step as you go through it into the, uh, the project. So we have two options to save. One is called full save and one is called job bag. The full save will save everything that is um, in your file. So it's kind of like doing a file save or you can do control S. So a file save is basically going here at the top left and you click save or save as. And going down here, it's the same thing. You're just full saving in a folder, okay? And that folder is gonna be whatever you name it as. Um, so an example, if I put, let's say I do a quick uh, band Ball placer, sweep. So if I create this band here, I can click full save and it will save everything in uh, on my screen. The job bag save is a little bit different. It only saves um, whatever you select. So let's say um, I just wanna save the band I created. So I just simply select the band and then click job bag. And then here, as you can see, it creates uh, a new job bag with the selected object. So I didn't select the, what we call the ring rail and profile. So it's not gonna be saved in my job bag, but full save will save everything regardless of whether you select it or not select it. So for matrix gold, you're gonna probably um, do a lot more full saves than job bag saves. The reason why you would use a job bag save is if let's say you're working on um, this particular design and you have multiple parts, you can save uh, a particular part into the job bag and then bring them back later. And to bring it back, you would just right click and then go import. So going down here, so below projects, we have layers. Layers are just a way to um, kind of organize the objects on your 
uh, in your design. So if I have, so if you look here, this curve is brown. I have this curve, which is yellow, which is the profile placer. And then my ring is green. Um, just to show you how to use the layers, I want to just add a couple spheres on my screen. So as you can see, when I'm creating the spheres, all the spheres are green. And the reason being is that the uh, green here is uh, highlighted. So if I select a different shade of green and I try to make another sphere, it's going to change the color. Now, not every object to create will um, be the selected color. Sometimes the matrix gold has certain default um, colors for objects. Uh, an example would be gems. If I create a gem, um, it's defaulted uh, blue. Okay, so how you work with layers. So as you can see, I've got three different layer colors. Um, right now, I can select any of these objects. If I lock, let's say the dark green. So right here, there's a, a lock. I won't be able to select the green layer, but I can select all the other layers. If I click the eye and gray it out, that it will hide that particular layer. So you can't hide or lock layers that are already selected. So as you can see here, I have this shade of green selected. Um, I can't hide it. I'll get this error, cannot lock current layer. So if I want to lock this particular layer, I have to change the selected color. So let's say I do this uh, light green. So then I can start hiding the other shades. So I'm going to unhide these and um, show you if I want to change the color of an object, we can do that. So let's say this sphere, I want to make it a different shade of green. I can click the arrow or I kind of looks like a play button and that will change the color. Um, at the top here, you can select multiple objects. So if I select these two spheres here, I can click hide and it'll hide those objects. If I click show, it'll show those two objects. So that's kind of how the layers work. Moving on to the center, which is the viewport. As you can see here, I'm working in the perspective view, which um, is noted here in the top left tab here. So if I double click the perspective view, it opens up four viewports. So because Major School works in um, 3D, how it works is you work in your um, top view, front view, and right view, and then these combine into your perspective view. So for beginners, I'd recommend running the software in these few views. Um, it just makes it easier to understand what's kind of happening. And as you can see here, the top view is basically the top where um, you're looking down on top of a ring. The front view is where your kind of the finger passes through or through finger. And the right side is the side view. Um, and then combined, you can, it's the perspective. You can maximize these views by just simply clicking on the tab. So top view, if I double click it, it goes back to four. Double click on the right, it maximizes that. If you already maximized the view and you want to just change the view, you can go down here at the bottom. So perspective, top, front, and right. If I click uh, front, it's going to toggle to front. If I hit perspective, it'll toggle to, perspe to perspective. Um, another thing to note is the viewport rendering. So right now, this is what we call shaded view, where you can see the um, objects where it's kind of a solid color with the wireframes. I can click here where it's, there's a drop down menu and change the viewport render to, let's say, wireframe rendered, which is a quick rendering, um, not photorealistic, but just a, a quick rendering of the 
objects ghosted if you want to see them semi uh, translucent and we have multiple other ones so the one I like is plastic um, I would suggest taking the time to just going through each one of these and finding what works best for you again like I prefer plastic wireframe and shaded now going down to the bottom here where underneath the viewport we have what we call snaps i'm not going to go through this um, in this video but basically it's just makes modeling easier because we're working with um, on a computer and if you want to zoom in on this you can zoom in indefinitely so what that means if i draw a line here and i don't have snaps on and i want to connect uh, another line to the end of this so it looks like it's connected but if i zoom in it's not and then because again this is a computer i can zoom in indefinitely i'll never get this to really touch but by having snaps so this is a end snap i can snap to the end of this line and then draw my uh, my next line, which is going to be attached to this. And then I'll know this is going to be touching at all all times. So snaps allow you to connect objects. Below that, we have the command line. Command line is going to be very important. It's going to show you um, whether a tool is active or how to use a tool. Right now, I don't have any tools active. That's why it just shows command. If I do have a tool active, it won't say it. So sometimes people um, will do something and something's not working, like they're unable to select something. It could most likely mean that you have a command selected. If you do, you can hit escape and it'll cancel out the command. So an example, again, if I were to draw a line, it'll say here, rather than say command, it'll say start of line. So it'll tell you, how to initiate the tool. So start of line, end of line. Now that I've created the, the line, the tool is done and it goes back to command. And again, if um, you're doing something, just check the command line. If it doesn't say command, hit escape and it'll uh, cancel out. <laughs> so moving on to the uh, right side. Um, right here at the top, we have something called recent commands. So all the tools that I've been using um, thus far, it will show here. Um, this is pretty straightforward. So any tool that you use will appear here. So just in case you ever needed to reuse a tool, um, you can go here. Below that is dynamic groups. So matrix gold, um, one of the key features of it is having the ability to create um, parametric and dynamic uh, designs. So as you can see here, so let me just open this band I had created earlier. So this band I created using three dynamic tools. And as you can see here, it says dynamic commands. It shows I use the ring rail, profile placer, and sweep one. So what these dynamic commands allow you to do is create a parametric model. So I've created this um, simple band. And if I want to change the finger size of the band, I would just go to the ring rail, edit, and then just change the finger size. So let's say I want this from to go from size 7 to size 5. And it's going to re-sweep to a size five. Now, in terms of the dynamic commands, the only commands that are dynamic are the ones that have this little lightning bolt um, beside it. So if I go through the, the ribbon bar and I click on, let's say curve, surface, and solids, you can see here in solids, there's these tools with little lightning bolts and then there's these ones without it. The ones with the lightning bolts are dynamic commands. <clears throat> and 
Now, when you start getting into a more complicated design, you may want to group the dynamic commands, and that's why we have dynamic groups. So if I select all the objects here, and then click on the create dynamic group from selection, so this basically the plus or add, give it a name, so let's say this is the band, and then that'll be a dynamic group. So it just makes it easier to hide or select um, groups of objects. I don't really use this that much, but um, it can be handy for those who have very complicated designs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and then below that, we have the gem report. So if I had any gems, um, so let's say I go and do extract the ISO curve. And I load some gems on curve. Click calculate. It'll show me, oh, I have 11 uh, diamonds and they are 1.3 millimeters. Now, these aren't all the, the menus. If I click the M here at the top left, go to view. I have um, other menus here. So I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these. But um, as we go through uh, designing in the course, um, I'll go through these in more detail. So we have an animation studio, batch render, display modes. Um, display modes is basically uh, just going here and just choosing a viewport render option. So if I go to display mode, so as you can see down here, it adds it here. But I don't need this, I close it just because I can go here. Um, view, metal weights, so kind of how I did the gem report. If you uh, apply materials to the objects, you can calculate the metal weights on them. Properties just gives you uh, uh, information on objects once they're selected. Uh, render studio is when you start rendering um, your designs out. So you would use the render studio to apply materials and render them out. And then we have a ring resizer. So the things you can do are um, change the interfaces um, sizing. So if I click down here where it says 110%, um, you can slide this up and down and it'll change the size of the menus. So for those who have a high resolution monitor, you maybe you want to increase the size or it, those that um, just want to have more surface area, maybe you want to decrease the size of everything. Um, it's all user preference, but uh, just know that you have the ability to change that. Uh, another cool feature that we have here is the timer for those that want to know how long it takes them to do a design. Um, you can record the amount of time it takes to do a design um, and then you can keep note of that. That's basically it. That's the uh, user interface of Matrix Gold and I'll see you in the next video.